welcome to CPCS Theory Test, 2022, UK. Question 1. What is the definition, of, or how, can a hazard be described? The correct answer is, a hazard is a situation where there is a potential threat, or risk, to life, health, property, or the environment. Question 2. What is the purpose of a risk assessment? The correct answer is, to identify and place control measures on hazards. Question 3. List six typical subject areas that should be covered in a site induction. The correct answer is, in no particular order of importance, access and egress, accident reporting, confined spaces, buried services, contamination, welfare facilities, electricity, emergency procedures, escape routes, first aid facilities, excavations, fire procedures, method statements, plant and equipment use, lifting operations, working from at height, reporting procedures, reporting structure, restricted or prohibited areas, safety signs and signals, site layout, waste disposal, smoking, toilets, traffic routes. Question 4. What three main duties of the Health and Safety at Work Act must employees follow? The correct answer is, a. Take reasonable care for themselves, and others who may be affected by their actions, b. Cooperate with the employer, c. Not intentionally or recklessly interfere with health and safety issues. Question 5. What does the Health and Safety at Work Act require employers to do with regards specifically to plants? The correct answer is, provide and maintain plant that is safe and without risk to health. Question 6. A. What is the purpose of a method statement and B. What is required of the operator? The correct answer is, A. A document that gives specific instructions on how to safely perform a work-related task and b. Comply with the method statement. Question 7. Name four different types or levels of sanctions that can be applied by employers and judicial bodies to plant operators who do not comply with or follow legislation and regulations. The correct answer is verbal warning, written warning, Dismissal, Prosecution Question 8 Plant operators are generally regarded as safety critical workers. What does this mean? The correct answer is, their actions, with the machine, could have significant health and safety consequences on themselves and others. Question 9 Name three ways in which an operator can minimize their impact upon the environment whilst using the machine. The correct answer is, efficient use, lower engine speed, well-maintained machine, correct disposal of waste, no spillage of fluids, bio-oils, or fuels, prior planning for work tasks for efficiency. Question 10. In what situation does a hard hat not need to be worn when operating a 360 excavator? The correct answer is, only when sitting in an enclosed cab that meets FOPS criteria. Question 11. The operator has to fit and use a new bucket using a quick hitch coupler that they are unfamiliar with. What do regulations, PUWER 98, and other guidance require the operator to have? The correct answer is, sufficient information, instruction and training on that type. Question 12. What are the possible outcomes if being prosecuted, by judicial bodies, for not complying with legislation and regulations? The correct answer is, case dismissal, fine, imprisonment. Question 13. Give two examples of where the work at height regulations may apply to 360 excavator operations. The correct answer is, access or egress to the cab, access or egress to the engine compartment, boom maintenance, greasing boom, dipper components. Question 14. 
How can a qualification or card benefit a plant operator? The correct answer is, credibility, proof of skills, employment prospects, promotional prospects. Question 15. Name three ways that a plant operator can contribute in ensuring repeat business with the client or main contractor. The correct answer is, work safely, efficiently, complying with method statements, punctuality, cooperation with other workers. Question 16. Where should the excavator's operator's manual be kept and why? The correct answer is, at a place, preferably on the machine, where the operator can have easy unhindered access to the manual. Question 17. If the operator has to top up the hydraulic oil, state two precautions to ensure cleanliness of the system. The correct answer is, clean the filler access cap and area before removing and transfer oil into the tank using clean equipment. For questions 18 and 19, the operator's manual for the machine being used for the test must be available for reference by the candidate. Question 18. Using the operator's manual, state the figure for setting track tension, for wheeled units, state the tire's operating pressure. The correct answer is, as per the manual, note, the page number of the manual must be quoted by the candidate verbally for the recording. Question 19. Using the operator's manual, state the cold starting procedure for the machine. The correct answer is, as per the manual, note, the page number of the manual must be quoted by the candidate verbally for the recording. Question 20. State the purpose of the check valves located on the boom cylinder rams. The correct answer is, to prevent the boom lowering unintentionally when the engine stops or a pipe bursts. Question 21. What is the purpose of a roll or ROPS frame? The correct answer is, to provide some protection to the operating position, as far as is reasonably practical, in the event of an overturn of the machine. Question 22. If checking the oil level using a dipstick, why must gloves be worn? The correct answer is, can prevent skin diseases and prevents contamination of oil onto the operating controls and cab. Question 23. Apart from the operator, who else may need to use the machine's operator's manual? The correct answer is, supervisors, planners, maintenance staff, low loader drivers. Question 24. What is the purpose of the counterweight of the machine? The correct answer is, to minimize the overturning effect of the load for the configuration. Question 25. During work, the engine starts to overheat. Explain the danger if someone tries to remove the radiator or expansion tank cap. The correct answer is, the cooling system is normally pressured, and removing the cap can allow hot water to escape uncontrollably with the potential for causing severe burns. Question 26. If both travel levers, or travel pedals for wheeled machines, are pushed forwards when the track motors, or driving wheels, are in front of the cab, in which direction would the machine move? The correct answer is, rearwards. Question 27. If the machine is being traveled or working on the public highway, including adjacent pavements and verges, the Road Traffic Act applies. A. What type of license and which classes should the operator hold? B. What is the minimum age allowed? The correct answer is, A UK, or approved, driving license bearing Class B and Class H, tracked endorsement, wheeled machines do not require Class H, and, B, 21 years of age. Question 28. When must a banksman or a signaler be used before moving an excavator? The correct answer is, when the operator is unable to face the intended direction of travel reversing. Question 29. Why must the seat belt be worn, even with the cab door closed? 
The correct answer is, in the event of a rollover, as far as reasonably practicable, keeps the operator within the confines of the operating seat which may minimize injury by not being flung around. Question 30. Give four reasons that may cause the machine to tip over forwards or sideways. The correct answer is, lifting with too much outreach for the load, excessively sized bucket, working overside of the tracks or chassis and not along, too much high density material in bucket, soft ground, working on slopes, excavating, breakout force, using excessive outreach, not using stabilizers, wheeled machines. Question 31. What information does the dig envelope, also known as working range, chart give? Candidates may be shown a copy of a chart. The correct answer is, the full digging potential scope, depth and reach, of the machine for a particular boom and dipper combination. Question 32. Explain all visual checks that must be carried out on all types of quick hitch bucket attaching systems before use. The correct answer is, no visible damage to the coupler, attachment, hoses, and other components. All components available and fitted correctly. Any locking system active in place. Locking pin, if used, in the correct hole. Other answers will depend on coupler type. Question 33. On a semi-automatic quick hitch bucket attaching system, A. What is the purpose of the safety pin? B. What checks must be made to the pin before use? The correct answer is, A. To prevent the latching system from unclasping the attachment, B. In the correct place, in the fully locked position, secured by linchpin or clip. Other answers will depend on coupler type. Question 34. Cable avoidance tools, CATS, can detect a variety of buried services. What type of material do they have limitations in locating? The correct answer is, plastic piping. Question 35. Describe one physical method of checking that a bucket is fully secured to the quick hitch coupler prior to work. The correct answer is, rotate the bucket throughout the full working range several times or place the bucket lightly on the ground and try to unhook the coupler from the bucket through machine movement. Other methods may exist which can be accepted by the tester. Question 36. Name two types of equipment used to ensure that excavation levels, measurements, and positions are to the required specification. The correct answer is, travelers and boning rods, laser leveling devices or GPS boom height sensor devices. Question 37. When working in a confined area or space, a. What danger can be present with regards to the counterweight of the machine? B. What is the recommended minimum distance? C. What measures must be implemented if the gap is less? The correct answer is, A. The gap between the counterweight and a structure being reduced or contacted the object or structure when slewing, B. At least 600 mm, C. Ensure sufficient clearance or block off access routes. Question 38. If setting up to excavate in a confined area, name two things should be taken into account before starting. The correct answer is, spoil placing, egress of the machine after excavating, proximity hazards, able to excavate to required length or depth. Question 39. What particular and specific hazards can affect the stability of the machine when working on old industrial brownfield sites? The correct answer is, old workings, soft ground due to contamination. Question 40. If setting up to work in a pedestrianist area, state three factors that need to be taken into account. The correct answer is, physical segregation of pedestrians from work, machine movements, noise, fumes. Question 41. The operator is asked to excavate a new trench. 
state five different requirements that must be considered or implemented before work commences. The correct answer is, shoring requirements, checking for underground services and hazards, authorization to work, permit to work, proximity hazards, access to method statement, spoil location, trench specification and location, access and egress routes for the machine, starting and finishing points of the trench. Question 42. Before manually changing any bucket, a. Where should the bucket be positioned, in relation to the ground, before removing the final pin, b. Why? The correct answer is, a. Resting on the ground so unable to fall, b. Could strike or trap any part of the body. Question 43. With regards to lifting accessories, irrespective of who supplied the accessories, what three factors should be ensured before the accessories are used? The correct answer is, the accessories are serviceable, certificate, are correct for the load, and able to support the load. Question 44. A. What is the recommended minimum distance to be kept away from overhead power lines mounted on wooden poles when setting up the machine? B. Explain why a distance should be kept. The correct answer is, A. 9 meters plus the length of the boom, B. High voltage electricity can arc across large gaps in certain conditions. Question 45. If a trench has a depth of 2 meters, A. What is the minimum distance to maintain from the edge of the trench when placing spoil, B. Explain why. The correct answer is, A. At least 2 meters, B. Lesser distance may cause trench collapse. Question 46. Why should different soils be segregated during excavating? The correct answer is, for reuse on, or offsite. Question 47. Give three reasons why an oversized bucket should not be used when excavating trenches to specification. The correct answer is, longer time to excavate, increased amount of spoil to store or remove, more backfill stone or concrete needed, machine stability issues. Question 48. A. Why should the slewing direction be to the left wherever possible? B. Explain why. The correct answer is, A. The operator normally has a clearer view, B. The right side is obscured by the boom. Question 49. Why must excavator operators, not begin to load vehicles until the forward tipping dumper driver is clear of their machine? The correct answer is, the bucket of the machine or load may contact the driver. Question 50. What makes up the total? or gross, weight of a load that is to be lifted. The correct answer is, weight of the load itself, weight of the lifting accessories and weight of the bucket and quick hitch coupler, if not already accounted for in the lifting capacity chart. Question 51. Using the lifting capacity diagram Annex A, A. If the machine is equipped with a 2.5 meter long dipper, what is the maximum lifting capacity in tons at 6 meters radius over the sides of the track with the load at 3 meters height, b. If a longer dipper is fitted, what effect does that have on the lifting capacity? The correct answer is, the annex will be provided by the tester at the test. Question 52. What factors determine the shoring requirements of a trench? The correct answer is, soil type trench depth, working in trenches, weather. Question 53. Give two reasons why, wherever possible, operators should excavate ground in layers. The correct answer is, creates a cleaner cut, minimizes overspill, more efficient bucket fill, reduces risk of damaging unknown buried services. Question 54. If a yellow colored marker tape is unearthed during excavating, which two types of services could this indicate? The correct answer is, gas and electricity. Question 55. 
What is the nearest distance allowed to gas pipes when excavating with the machine? The correct answer is, 0.5 meters. Question 56. When slewing with a load, where should the operator be looking? The correct answer is, ahead of the load. Question 57. What is the meaning of this hand signal, being demonstrated by the tester? The correct answer is, slew in the direction shown. Question 58. Explain a possible danger if the excavator is lifting a load on sloping ground, even though the load chart indicates that the machine can lift that load. The correct answer is, the load to machine radius increases working downhill possibly causing the machine to tip. Question 59. Before lowering into or moving a drag box into a trench, what trench related checks must be made? The correct answer is, that all workers are out and clear of the trench. Question 60. If the excavator is carrying out deep excavation work using the full working range, what hazard may occur? The correct answer is, it is possible to excavate beneath the machine's tracks. Question 61. Describe two actions to be taken for an open trench at the end of a working day. The correct answer is, barriers and warning signs indicating an open trench. Question 62. Before leaving the cab for a rest break, after parking and switching off the machine, what final action must be carried out? The correct answer is, the machine must be isolated to prevent unauthorized individuals from starting, moving, operating the machine. Question 63. When parking the machine at the end of the shift, name three places where the machine should not be parked. The correct answer is, site roads, access and egress routes from buildings, pedestrian routes, soft ground, wet ground, steep ground. Question 64. The operator has been asked to drive the machine onto a transporter or trailer. A. Who is responsible for the loading operations? B. State four actions to be considered by the operator before loading commences. The correct answer is, A. The transporter driver, B. Ground support, trailer ramp condition, ramp grip, and incline, overhead and other proximity hazards, positioning on the trailer, machine configuration for loading, condition of the machine for loading, direction for travel onto trailers. Question 65. If the operator has loaded the machine onto a transporter or trailer on behalf of a driver, what checks must be carried out before they leave the cab? The correct answer is, the machine and components dipper etc. are in the agreed position, hydraulic operated components grounded and pressure removed, cab door, where applicable, fully shut, windows, where applicable, shut. Question 66. Why should an excavator be refueled at the end of the day? The correct answer is, to minimize condensation buildup in the fuel system. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to support this channel. Thank you for watching and good luck for your test.